Hi, uh, welcome to this lecture and as I promised uh, that in last lecture that uh, we will be looking at the uh, lithography which is called photolithography because we are using here photons to uh, kind of carve or pattern uh, the material that is deposited onto the wafer. Right. So, photolithography comes from a Greek word called photos and lithos carving from a single stone. Uh, however, we are not using stone here we are using the substrate and what we are carving? We are carving or patterning different materials that we are depositing onto the substrate. So, in the photolithography the first thing that we need to learn is what are the steps in the photolithography right. So, you can take a wafer then you have to uh, pre clean the wafer because uh, there can be residual oxygen or oxide that is there because of the oxygen present in the atmosphere reacting with this silicon wafer. Now, we will uh, first stick to the standard photolithography technique in which we are talking about silicon wafer as a substrate right. So, silicon uh, if you use and if silicon you store in a in a lab, if there is a native oxide, uh, then you need to remove the native oxide using the hydrofluoric acid because hydrofluoric acid is the agent for uh, etching the native oxide. Now, when you take the wafer, the first thing you need to do is pre clean the wafer, then because you have pre cleaned the wafer, there is a di water, deionized water involved during the pre cleaning process, you need to uh, pre bake it right. Pre bake uh, when you pre bake it, what happens that the uh, any any water uh, that is a droplet that is there or moisture which is there on the wafer will get evaporated or uh, because of the high temperature or pre baking step. Uh, once you do that you may go for primer coating or you may not go for primer coating ok. Um, now, why to go for primer coating because that improves the addition of photo resist uh, onto the wafer but not every time we go for primer coating. So, that is a difference when we primer coating as something like HMDS. Now, uh, the purpose of photolithography if you understand is to print right features uh, on a wafer directly or by using photo resist. So, either there is a direct printing or by using the photons like I said we will talk about the UV photolithography there is a X-ray photolithography there is a EB photolithography um, and many other photolithography techniques are there, but we will stick to photolithography which is UV photolithography. So, generally the features at the top of the substrate surface of any sample are patterned using photo resist by exposing UV light. We will, we will see how that is done by developing an etching. So, first as I said we clean the wafer followed by the pre bake process followed by the primer coating. Now, once you do that the next step is photo resist spin coating right. I told you that photo resist we need to spin coat and what are the photo resist. So, it is a polymer and it is a photo sensitive polymer that is why photo and resist photo sensitive polymer. So, there are two types of photo resist. Uh, so, if I just write photo resist short form as PR there are two types one is positive photo resist positive and another one is the negative photo resist right. So, you can see negative photo resist. So, two types of photo resist now there is advantage of positive negative and how it can be used we will we'll discuss. Uh, so, after you have the photo resist right after you have photo resist uh, or you spin coat of photo resist the next step is to soft bake it. Soft bake is generally uh, when you talk about common photo resist it is done at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate ok. But this temperature remains same but the type would be different when we go for the oven ok. So, it, you can also do soft bake in an oven we are talking about soft bake in uh, on, on a hot plate. So, if soft bake is done on hot plate 90 degree centigrade is the time pre bake temperature can anywhere be from 100 degree centigrade to 120 degree centigrade again we are talking about silicon ok. So, uh, wafer cleaning pre bake primer coating then photo resist spin coating then soft bake. Once you soft bake you have to take a mask and align and expose ok. So, now let us understand uh, these terms for this photo resist then negative photo resist positive and negative how it works how the mask looks like and before everything how the wafer looks like is not it. So, let me uh, wear the gloves and then show it to you how the wafer will look like do not worry my hand will not disappear it is just to protect the wafer from any contamination that is there on the hand ok. So, what we will do is I have a wafer with me hmm? and for a moment if you can just uh, focus on uh, the substrate 
rather than the slide, uh, can you just show this uh, wafer? Yeah, thank you so much. So, okay, what I am holding here is the wafer, right? You can see the wafer in my hand, and the, this side is a polished side, polished, right? Why? Because you can see, right? You can see the something, and if I put a uh, some image or if I just turn the wafer, you can see right, it is a very nice finish. You can see even the tweezer image onto this mirror, right? It is mirror finished. This is a polished side. If you turn it, right, this is the unpolished side. Can you see now? Tweezer, very difficult to see, right? Is a unpolished side. So, polished side, polished side here, unpolished side. That means it is a single single side polished wafer to hold it there is a tweezer you need to hold with the help of a tweezer right so it is a tweezer which is i am holding the wafer with right you should not use your gloves to hold even the wafer sometimes it is okay i'm just saying that as long as possible you hold, you use the tools that are there to hold your wafer okay now there is a way to hold the wafer otherwise if the wafer falls it will break now you can see here there is a primary flat and there is a secondary flat right you see there is a primary flat here. Uh, you may not able to see very clearly, but if I just put it little bit above, right? You can see that it is not circle. From here, it is a flat. Same thing. If I show you the bottom one, here there is a small flat, okay, which you may not be able to see. It's uh, it is fine. But here in the bottom, there is a small flat. So this is not a circular wafer. There is a flat here and flat in the bottom. The second flat, which is a secondary flat, is smaller than the primary flat. Generally, primary flats are bigger compared to the uh, secondary flat. Okay. So, now I am putting the wafer back. This is about the substrate silicon. This was 4 inch silicon wafer, okay, 4 inch 4 inch silicon wafer. Now, let me show you the mask okay. and then we will go back and see why we are doing all these things so that we understand uh, what is the role of this mask and role of the um, uh, photoresist and how we are going to use it. Okay. The mask that I am holding is a bright field mask. See, if you can see through the mask my face, is not it. So, this is bright field, this is bright field and if you can see little bit further right or, or with focus, you can see here there are some pattern right, there is some pattern here. Uh, two patterns are there. Okay. So, you see here there are some patterns, you see now you can see very clearly right. So, these patterns within that bright field, within the field, the patterns are there, right. So, this is called a bright field mask, okay. A mask which is bright, field is bright, and the patterns are dark, bright field mask, easy. Now, let me show you the dark field mask. So, it will be even more easier for you to understand, okay. So, and we will use this bright field mask and dark field mask while we are going to fabricate this implantable devices for the brain. We are not going away from what, what the course is all about, but these are some of the important steps you to understand before you can fabricate these neural implants. Okay. Now, what the mask that I am holding, can you see? So, most of the uh, area is dark, but the patterns are bright, uh, it is kind of okay. So, most of the area, but the transparent things are there, no? transparent things are there, these are the brighter field, like these are the patterns. Okay. So, the area is dark, the patterns are bright, is called dark field mask. When the field is dark, the patterns are bright, dark field mask. When the field is bright, patterns are dark, is called the bright field mask. So, it is just by looking at the mask, you can see a what is bright field and what is dark field. Okay. This is still, uh, this is still it looks like, um, uh, this is of course a bright field, this still looks like a bright field, but it, it, it is, it can be, it may not be. Um, uh, and the way to understand is because everything is dark, only the patterns are brighter. Um, uh, and you can very clearly differentiate from this way also. Dark field mask can even be darker because only few patterns are there, but um, just to quickly uh, make you understand this is the bright field and dark field mask. Now, we go for the next mask. So, let us see. We will go for the uh, pattern wafer uh, and some patterns on the wafer, how it looks like once you uh, uh, grow silicon dioxide and then deposit gold and then you pattern the 
uh, wafer. Okay. So, I will show it to you just look into that you can see here these are several devices on a 4 inch wafer right. So, there is an oxide layer on which gold is deposited and some patterns are created right. It looks like a microchip right semiconductor microchip is not it the same thing in a way it is same thing, but we are talking about devices we are not talking about the circuits right. So, we are not talking about um, let us say a ADC or we are not talking about on op amp right on the wafer what we are talking about is the devices which can be uh, micro heater which can be sensors which can be integrated sensors which can be thermistors which can be force sensors which can be temperature sensors can be can be lot of things okay can be inter digital electrodes so lot of things we can use with the same semiconductor technology semiconductor fab lab process okay so even i don't claim or we should not claim that uh, we are fabricating a circuit but the process more or less remains even you go for the silicon based circuit fabrication and fabrication steps more or less are or the, the processes are same, but the steps may differ also the mask may differ, but thermal oxidation remains thermal oxidation deposition techniques remains deposition techniques right. So, the um, the beauty of understanding the micro fabrication is that once you understand you can apply for many different fields agriculture, space, uh, healthcare, right, uh, semiconductor fabrication uh, and, and many more. Okay. So, anyways uh, let us not uh, get diverted because uh, it is uh, I am very passionate about the micro fabrication technology. So, I'll, if I keep on talking we will be deviated from the uh, original topic of understanding the photolithography. So, let us understand the do understand that once you use the mask you have to throw the mask that is it no reusing of the mask uh, no reusing of the gloves okay? not mask do not throw the mask gloves. So, when we, once we use the gloves you have to throw and discard it. So, I am discarding the gloves and um, uh, also um, right now I am just showing it to you um, uh, as, a, as a demo. But when you are in the fab lab, you have to gown yourself and you will see in the recording how to gown, how to enter the fab lab, everything. So, that I am want to give you a real life experience as if you are um, uh, at IASC uh, uh, taking a particular course and going to the lab, right. I am trying to make it as realistic as I can using this beautiful NPTEL platform, okay. However, there would be some uh, uh, gaps. So, I apologize for that but let us try to understand these things further. So, we we are at photoregist. Now, let us understand the photoregist and beauty of using photoregist with the mask. Okay. So, until now what we have done is uh, we if you go back to the slide we have seen po positive photoregist and negative photoregist okay. and then we will see how positive photoregist is used and how negative photoregist is used. But first the positive photoregist when we go for a negative photoregist of go for if I use a bright field mask or dark field mask what happens and in this case if I use bright field mask or dark field mask what happens that we will see uh, in, in another slide. Right now just uh, in the steps photography wafer cleaning, pre bake primer coating, photo spin coating, soft bake alignment, alignment of what the mask that I have shown it to you with respect to the wafer. Okay. So, let me uh, quickly show it to you what does alignment means and then we will uh, take this further. I do not want you to uh, get confused with any terms that we are using here. So, let me show it to you alignment. Okay. So, you have seen this is a mask correct this is a mask let us take an example of a bright field mask. So, this is the alignment mark and tell you what is the role of alignment mark and let us say this is the pattern on the bright field mask. Okay. These are patterns on the bright field mask. Now, we have a wafer okay. you have a wafer and then wafer is assume that it is a spin uh, spin coated with photo resist and soft bake is also done these two steps are done hmm. pre baking is done soft bake uh, photo resist spin coating is done and soft bake is done. Now, we have to align the mask with the wafer such that this is a mask on the wafer this mask right and this is the wafer. So, you align the mask on the wafer such that this triangle comes somewhere in the center of the wafer this is a first step, but if you want to have one more mask then the alignment issue will start coming. Okay. So, these are your plus are your alignment mark align 
meant mark. If you say 2 both plus then marks okay, alignment marks and how this uh, sorry a l i a l i g n m e n t right. I am sorry about the spelling alignment is a l i g n m e n t. Hmm. So, we will rewrite it a l i g n m e n t alignment marks. Okay. So, alignment marks are there and then you uh, align this with respect to the wafer. Now, this for the one mask is fine what happens if you have one more mask let us say you have one more mask. So, let me draw one more mask and uh, in this mask I am having a circle like this. Okay, circle like this. This is my mask 1, this is mask 2. Okay. Now, once you align this, this is this one. Okay. So, let us say 1. Once you are here, once you alignment here, alignment and, and then exposure. So, when there is a UV exposure, what will happen is you, you have to take out the mask and develop the wafer, develop the wafer, wafer is this silicon wafer. The silicon wafer when you say develop is what you are actually developing what? You are actually developing a photoresist. So, photoresist developer, after photoresist developer uh, certain area will become stronger, other area will become weaker and then you form the hard bake which is at 120 degree centigrade 1 minute on hot plate finally, you inspect the wafer. So, now let us go each step right uh, yeah, so that we understand uh, and I will show you the what I mean by alignment, uh, development, hard bake and pattern inspection. So, what I will do is I will show you the photolithography technique here. Okay. So, we will write down here photo lithography. It is a one term, okay. photolithography is a one term. I am just uh, uh, explaining you how it is uh, derived. So, photo then litho and graphic okay. that is how it comes, but it is a one term photolithography. All right. So, we start with a silicon wafer, okay, good, we start with silicon wafer. The next step is you clean this wafer, uh, you clean the wafer and then you pre bake it, is not it? Pre bake it and clean the wafer. Next step is you spin coat photoresist. Okay. So, I have spin coated the photoresist. Let us assume that it is a positive photoresist. Okay after spin coating. So, you can have primer coating and spin uh, and spin coating photoresist or directly spin coating of photoresist. After you spin coat photoresist the next step is next step is soft bake right 90 degree centigrade 1 minute on hot plate. Once you do that next step let us write right here you have your photoresist. Okay. And now it is soft bake, great. The next step, as we have learned in the previous slide, is alignment and exposure. Alignment of what? The mask. We have seen the mask? Yes. So now let us align it. If we have seen the mask, let us align it. Okay. So we will load the mask and align it with respect to the wafer. 
okay. This is our bright field mask. Bright field mask. This is positive photoresist. This one is our silicon. Okay. Alignment and exposure. Exposure with what? UV light. So once you align it after soft bake, you align the wave, the mask with respect to wafer, and then you so uh, then you expose it. Expose with what? Expose with UV light. Expose with UV light. After exposure, what was the next step? Unload the mask and develop the wafer. You remember this one? Alignment and exposure. Then development. But you cannot develop the entire mask, you know, you have to unload the mask. So, unload unload the mask unload the mask and dip the wafer in photoresist developer right see development the development of what photoresist so we unload the mask and and dip in the photoresist developer now you see what happens okay when we do that the area which is not exposed okay so, you unload the mask, let us under unload the mask and develop the fourth. So, what will happen? The area which is which area here you can see there is one, this area and this area, this three, let us say one, two, three. This three area is not exposed. So, the unexposed area becomes stronger and the exposed area will become weaker. So, I will have the photoresist patterned in this term you see the unexposed area of the photoresist will become stronger in the case of positive photoresist. So, when we use positive photoresist irrespective of our mask whether it is bright field or dark field the area which is exposed becomes weaker the area which is not exposed becomes stronger in case of positive photoresist. Okay. But assume that instead of photoresist, the positive photoresist, this one. Okay. So, let us say this one is A. Hmm. So, if I draw A again here, this is my A again I am drawing, okay. but I am saying that it is A star. Why? I will tell you the reason. Silicon is there, photoresist is there. Right. So, let me quickly draw a box. Now, in this case what I am doing is you see in this case instead of positive photoresist I am using a negative photoresist. Instead of positive photoresist let us use bright field mask it does not matter like I said bright field mask bright field or dark field does not matter, does not matter means um, <laughs> you, it, it matters, but it, it, it depends on what kind of pattern you want, but not with respect to the uh, positive of negative photoresist. So, I will tell you what happens here. So, it is negative photoresist. In A what was that? Positive photoresist. In A star what is there? It is a negative photoresist. Now, you have to again expose it, right? expose with UV light, UV ultraviolet now, if you expose this with help of UV light and then you develop it, develop right, unload the mask and develop what pattern you are assuming. So, you see here, if you say this is B, what would be B star? B star would be.
you see the difference here when you use negative photo energies the unexposed region becomes weaker which are unexposed region region 1 second and third the unexposed region you see the unexposed region here it becomes here it is weaker but in the case of positive photo energies the unexposed region becomes stronger you see the difference how the positive negative photo is there so, we can also write like this that first is what in case of positive photo is the unexposed region becomes stronger and in case of the negative photo register unexposed regions becomes weaker correct. Alternatively in some books what they write that in case of the positive photo register in some of the books you will see that exposed region becomes weak exposed region becomes strong same thing correct in case of positive photo edges, the unexposed region becomes stronger exposed region becomes weaker in case of negative photo edges, the unexposed becomes weaker exposed region becomes stronger so you see exposed regions are these regions this one this one this one right. So, we missed one more now here see I am, I am sorry 1, 2, 3, 4 now here, here let me just quickly redraw, but I hope you got the, the idea, idea right instead of uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4 right it, it will be like this in case of negative photo register. The exposed region will become the will become stronger and the unexposed region will become weaker in case of our negative photo register. I hope all of you now understands what happens when we go for positive photo register what happens when we use the negative photo register right. This is case when we have negative photo register because the exposed region is stronger and the unexposed region is weaker ok. Now, I will delete this particular uh, negative photo register example and we will continue with our uh, positive photo register after development we get this and what is the next step ok. The beauty of lithography or photolithography is that photolithography is also known as the heart of microfabrication. Once you understand how the photolithography works and you can pattern the wafer, lot of things uh, for you will become easier particularly when we want to fabricate uh, devices whether it is uh, a implantable device for neural applications or device as simple as your micro heater ok. So, that is why I take a little bit more time in explaining this particular section of the uh, of the course because it will be useful when we actually fabricate devices uh, for the neural implants. All right. After this, the next step here is so where were we? We have loaded the mask we expose the uh, photoregist through the mask with the help of UV light, we unload the mask, we develop the photoregist and this is the developer and this is the final pattern that we get after of the photoregist. The next step is hard bake ok. So, this will be the next uh, uh, lecture till then you take care uh, I will see you in the next class bye for now.